All right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to cover just a few quick uh, uh, geometric editing tools in Rhino, how to export that geometry to Ecotect, and how to do a uh, solar radiation analysis, both of a uh, ground plane for shadow studies and of the kind of solar radiation within the walls of a building. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just do a polyline and draw, you know, uh, a typical building. So maybe it's 90 feet. I'm going to go 45 feet. 45 feet, come back in 15 feet, uh, and then I'll have another 45 out to 90, and I'll close this. Uh, and we could extrude this, and let's say that the building is 60 feet tall. And so if I go into shaded view here, we have this. Um, one of the quick things you can edit is, let's say that you know we don't want to have a flat face on this building. If I did uh, move edge, is the command, I can grab one edge or multiple edges of the building and drag them out further. Uh, so right now uh, I can hit, right now I'm on ortho, but if I hit shift I can come off of uh, orthographic projection and uh, I can also come down and let's hit tab and I'm locked in on this vector. So I, I snap to this back layer by hitting tab. I'm going to move this face out there. Um, another option we can do is to move a face. So if I type move face I can click one face and let's say that we want to bring this face up. Uh, so what I'd want to do there is snap to some point along this vertical edge. I'm going to hit tab again and then if I pull up it's going to be locked to moving up and down. I'm going to say another 15 feet in height. If we wanted to get a little more complicated I could also split face. Uh, sorry, split face. And then I can click a face and I can click where I want to split that face. So here I'm going to split and I'm actually going to split it twice. Say enter, now we actually have three faces here. So if I said move face and I click this bottom face, I could drag it out along this vector and kind of create this side piece here. So with those simple changes, I'm going to take this entire mass and send it over to Ecotect. And to do that, I'm just going to select it, type export. Uh, Ecotech takes in a lot of files, just like uh, Rhino can take in and, and, and put out a lot of file types. We're going to be using a DXF file. So with this, I'm going to name it Building. Um, use a DXF and say Save. It's going to bring up this editor, and I've already preset... Sorry about that. I'm going to bring up... Uh, and mine, mine is preset for Ecotech. I'm going to show you how to make that. So you're going to want to edit a scheme. I'm on Ecotech. I'm going to delete that scheme right now. And so we have like the pre-existing ones. What you want to do is create a new scheme, call it Ecotech. Ecotech only works in meshes, so both your surfaces and your meshes have to be set to meshes. That's all you need to do. Click Save. You can check to make sure that happened, uh, where I go to a different one, and then come back to Ecotech, and I can see Mesh Mesh. So close this, um, and say I want to use my Ecotech settings, and say OK. Here is where we mesh the actual nerve surface. If I preview it, you can see we just get triangles, which makes sense. Say OK. And it was written to my desktop. So if I jump over to Ecotect, there's a few things we need to do here before we bring in the geometry. One is load up weather data. Uh, now, typically, you can go to File, or click this little guy here, and Load Weather File. And there'll be a whole bunch of presets here. Oftentimes you can find something close to where you're working, and that's all you need to do. But if you wanted to be more specific, you could go to Find Weather Data, U.S. Department of Energy. That'll load up uh, a website here, and you can pour through it. And let's say we're going to North America, let's say United States, uh, I'll do Pennsylvania, and I'll download the weather file for Lancaster. So download the file. I'm going to extract the file, and all I, oops, there we go. What I want is this file here, the EPW file. Uh, I'm going to move that to my desktop and close this. I can close the weather site. Uh, sadly, loading the EPW is not an option. We have to convert it. So we're going to convert weather data. In this window here, I'm going to go File, Open. And on my desktop, I have, this is my Philadelphia weather file, but I have EPW, which is my Lancaster file here. I'll import all of this. Looks great. File, save as, Lancaster, and we'll save it as a weather file. Save. I'm going to close this guy, and now I'm going to go to File, Load, and go to my desktop, and there's my Lancaster. 
we'll say yes. It loads up the file. Great. And the next thing we're going to do is go file, import, CAD geometry. I'm importing a DXF. I'll choose my file, and there's my building that I exported from Rhino. I can get a little preview of it here in the window. Uh, down here, it's important to know that we're working in millimeters. So we want to convert our feet to millimeters. Our Rhino model was in feet. Our Ecotech model will be in millimeters. So say convert, import into existing. Oh, one last thing, sorry. Uh, up here, I want to give it a, a generic material and just say that everything, by clicking my default layer, everything is a panel. And now I'll import into existing. So there's my building. Right now I'm in the 3D editor tab. I can visualize it, uh, but right now we'll stay here. Uh, one thing I want to do is just check the distance, and so I know this back side was initially 90 feet, so if I measure the top length here, good, we're at 90 feet. If you have a different unit, you haven't set up your units, to do that, you're going to go File, User Preferences, Localization, click US Standard, Feet and Inches, Apply to All Sessions. I already had my unit set up, so I have that readout there. All right, so that was step one. Uh, here, we've brought our geometry in. We have to make sure that the normals of all of these surfaces are facing out. So I go to Display Surface Normals. Right now, they're all facing in. So if I hit Control A to select all, I can modify Reverse Normals. Now they're facing out. If I wanted to get more accurate data, I could click one of these faces or multiple faces. Let's grab a couple here. And that's the bottom face. I actually don't want the bottom face. Let's do it this way. I'll take everything that's not the bottom face and go Modify, Surface Division, Rectangular Tiles. And I'm going to say I want 20-foot uh, divisions. I'm going to hit Tab and say I want to Trim. And I want to delete the original. I only want my subdivided faces. It's perfect for me. All right. So the first analysis we're going to do is a solar axis analysis. We're going to do incident solar radiation, the top choice. Click Next. For a specific period, this is saying we're going to do all year during business hours. I'll say average daily values, which make the most sense to me. I'm going to do all the objects, and we're going to clear values from other objects. That's fine. Uh, nothing has a value right now, but this is just a good tip. Uh, I'll perform a detailed shading. And here we go from most accurate to least accurate. But in the interest of time, I'm going to say low one point. I'm going to use a fast calculation. Click Next. This reviews all the settings, and I'll say OK. You can see here at the bottom, we whiz through it really quickly. And if I go to Visualize, you're going to see I'm, I'm really kind of a, at a weird angle. I have to change my lens length here, something like this. And now I can zoom out. Uh, I'm missing a few faces. I'm not really sure why that is. I think my graphics card is getting weird. But here we can see how many. Uh, uh, watt hours per meter squared each facade of the building is getting. So this will give an idea of how much kind of solar radiation this is being absorbed. If I wanted to have a better understanding of this, I could come over to the sun, say display sun path and display shadows, and you can see that actually the building, well this is a really weird angle, there we go, let's get something closer to this. You can see that this face is actually the south face. Um, so go back to my 3D editor, oh, jump back in the wrong program. So in Visualize, I can actually move the sun around, and so we can see that the south faces get the most, and here on the north face we get you know, less sun. The next thing I can also do here is to go down to the grid, um, and if I come to the bottom and say Auto Fit Grid to Object, I can ex uh, say that I want it around it, say OK, and I'm going to adjust manually adjust the grid extents. So the grid starts at a 0, 0, 0 point, which is here. Uh, actually, sorry, it's this one here. When I look from the south, it's always the bottom left. So from the zero, zero point, I actually want to pull it out so that it's larger than the site, past the site. I'm going to drab, grab, grab the x-axis and drag it you know, deeper than the site. Grab the y-axis and go deeper than the site this way. Um, I'm not really concerned with the z because I'm only doing a single building so that it's not going to vary as we move up and down. If you were to do multiple buildings, it would kind of... Uh, the lighting levels as you move up the facade would change. This is all we need to do for now. So if I go back to calculate, I can do uh, a, sh a shading analysis of the ground floor here. So solar axis, this time I'm going to do shading and overshadowing. Click Next. Specified period. This is fine. 
average daily values, makes sense to me, and I'm going to use the analysis grid this time. And I'm not going to use the full 3D extents, I'm only going to use the ground floor. Next, detail shading, one point is fine, we say OK. And so here it'll go through it. Hmm, and that doesn't seem right. Seems like everything has zero hours, which can't be correct. Let's see, if I adjust the grid, it can move up and down. All right, that makes sense. Visualize. Mm -hmm. Let's try it one more time. Solar axis analysis. Next, specify time period. Great. Average daily values. Analysis grid. Perform detailed shading. And let's try uh, medium, and I'll turn off the five. Let's see, this should take a little while longer. There we go. It's starting to work. All right, so with that detailed analysis, I can go back and turn on the sun's already on. But what we're seeing is that the majority of uh, the squares around the building um, is not displaying the right data, actually. Hmm. Although the analysis grid is correct, it's, it's saying that it's only getting the units hadn't updated here. Average daily, yeah. So I think my units are just messed up, but what this is showing is how much sunlight each portion of the building gets throughout the day. Uh, typically this would be displayed in hours, so bright yellow would be 10 plus hours, but something's not working quite right. But that's the right thing to do. Uh, with that in mind, I'm going to finish with saying that you need to export this data, so to do that you go File, Export, Image or Screenshot. Uh, I recommend using a BMP file. If you use a JPEG, you can sometimes run into problems. It doesn't parse right. So I use a bitmap, go here, and call this solar.bmp. Here I can specify the size. I'd go much bigger than you think you need to. That way it's high res. Say OK. And on my desktop here, I'll have solar.bmp. And see if preview it in Photoshop. And there you go. You'll, one thing you'll notice is that the, uh, the, uh, the, the key over here loses its inf information, so you have to manually write in what this color data means. Uh, but there's a pretty simple way to go from uh, Rhino to Ecotect and export something that gives you an idea of a preliminary massing. I hope that helps.